our students are the life of our school, and we have an army out there, and we need to support them so that they will support us. If we support our students, then they will help us. Mary Massad um, meant so much to Red Oak High School. I think mainly because we knew she loved us and we were her family. She was so proud to be a teacher. If anybody knows Miss Massad, whether she was in good shape or good spirits or sick, it didn't matter. She was coming to school. This was her life. She would do anything for, for a student who was in need. She's one of those rare people that they don't come along very often. You know. She talked a lot about being a hairdresser for so many years and how she enjoyed her customers. But I think when she became a teacher, that is what she always wanted to do. She always would talk about how proud she was of this new school and uh, how proud she was of her room and, and just what great kids she had here at the school. She was always telling the kids that the most important thing that she could preach was what you do when nobody's watching. She really taught her students to be accepting of each other uh, regardless of where they came from or where they were going. She may have taught world geography, but she really taught more than world geography. Very compassionate. She was very compassionate. She cared about her kids tremendously. Um, she was more concerned also not just about their knowledge, but how they were doing personally. Mary was so excited about this new high school, but we joked around that it was going to take her two years to clean out her old room, and that's how long it took to build the high school. And I think that's about how long it took to, uh, to pack up her stuff, and uh, because she had so much, she was a wealth of knowledge and information. She wanted to be here. She wanted to experience that with everybody, and I mean, I think that was a huge milestone in her life, and she got to do it and she wanted to be next to the elevator. I mean, that was, that's what she preached to all of us is, Mr. Frills better put me by the elevator. I remember when we built this new school, she was, she was just so happy and so tickled that we were gonna uh, have everybody together on one campus and it wouldn't feel like two separate organizations again. loved her family. She talked about her family a lot. Her sister, her brothers, her nieces, her nephews, her mom. She told stories about her dad. Um, very close to her family and enjoyed going to see them in the summers and on vacation. Mary loved Red Oak. She had a huge family of her own, but then Red Oak was like her second family. Kids were her life, the teachers at West Campus, we were all really close and we shared everything and uh, this was it. She loved teaching. I mean, she was a hairdresser for many years and when she came into teaching, I was surprised that she started teaching after such a long time of being in another profession, but she loved it. She spent any spare money she had on her kids and on things her kids needed in the classroom. If she saw a map, a globe, a book, uh, any a game, anything she thought would help her teach a sub part of the subject she was teaching that day, a lesson, um, she would buy it. She she played a huge part in a lot of things that went on here. Homecoming. She even missed dialysis to make sure that she made it to homecoming. I mean, even knowing what that could have done to her, it didn't matter. She wanted to be here for homecoming because it was for the kids. Last morning she was here on campus. Uh, I saw her as we were getting on the elevator. We would seem to meet up at the elevator a lot. And I saw her at the elevator, I asked her how she was doing, and she told me, well, you know, I'm a little bit tired. I was at the homecoming game, and she had been at open house, and so she was really a little fatigued. But, you know, she never let that get her down. She was just always very, very positive uh, and a great person. I walked down there and I looked at her and I said, Ms. Massett, you sure you should be here? She just smiled at me and she said, well, I'm sponsor, I'm advisor, aren't I? She said, of course I'm going to be here. And that's, that's just the way she felt about it. That was her attitude toward the whole thing. I happened to be on duty when I saw her fall and I ran to her 
and she said, Mr. Frill said, you know, Mary, let us, let us take you to ambulance. And she said, I don't want to go because who will take care of my kids? It wasn't about Mary taking care of Mary. It was about Mary taking care of her classroom. That's just the kind of woman that she is. I mean, and she was sick, but she came to school every day. I mean, we complain about having a cold and she came to school and she, I mean, she was definitely ill. I mean, this was her life. She loved being here. And for her to get up and get here every day, it took a tremendous amount of power. And yet she came with a smile on her face and was so happy to be here. She was never down about her health or not being able to get here. She was always happy to be here. She was at everything she could possibly be at. She still went to events when she could. It's unfortunate that the kids that had her this year didn't have her long enough to really get to know her. So I don't think, I mean, the impact was there because they knew that their teacher, you know, had passed away. It's the older kids that got to spend several years working with her, not just in a classroom capacity, but outside of that with the homecoming and all the, the student council and all the things that she did, that crushed them. She would want to be remembered as a teacher who cared, a teacher who loved geography, a teacher who loved her religion, um, her family, and her fellow teachers. I mean, she, like I said, she always had a smile on her face. She never was not happy about something. Even when her day was going rough, you know, the kids were driving her nuts, you know, she always saw the good in it. And she's like, she was thankful every day to have a job here. She always wanted to be here and she was very grateful for it. I miss her. I miss her laugh. I, I miss her friendship. She said something to me once, and it's such a gift. She said, you are my friend. And that's truly a great, great gift for someone to tell you that you are their friend. And she was my friend, too. It's been a big loss. It's been a big loss for uh, her students, and it's been a big loss for the faculty that knew Mary and loved her, and that was a lot of us. Sometimes in the morning, and I don't see her little car there, but she had a silver PT Cruiser, <laughs> and um, it, it reminded me of her little personality. <laughs> you know? And I see a car out on the highway sometimes, and I think of her if it's like her little car, and it makes me smile. I'm smiling because I know that she's okay. I think Mary would want to be remembered as somebody who was always there for you. If you had a problem, she would listen. Um, like I said, she loved her kids. She loved the school. She loved being a part of it. She felt like she was just a small part of a big thing, but boy, does she love it. And I hope that we all cherish and enjoy our memories of her, but that also that we all learned, that we all learned that um, love and tolerance and giving and appreciating each other for our differences is really quite special, and I will miss her for that. That's what we're here for. That's what teachers are supposed to be here for, to support our kids and then they will support us and then we can help them in life. <laughs>